Ladies and gentlemen, we are here live with Jose Cordeiro, who is, in my humble opinion, one of the most uh, interesting characters uh, at the summit. Uh, and how do you, what do you call yourself? What do you consider yourself? Well, I am an engineer now working on anti-aging, and my expectation is to cure aging in the next two to three decades. What do you mean by cure aging? Well, many people are uh, realizing that aging is a disease, but the beauty is that it is a curable disease. And the objective actually is to rejuvenate people. And we expect this might happen between 20 and 30 years. Therefore, I like to say, one, I don't plan to die, but two, more interesting, I plan to be younger in the future than I am today because we will rejuvenate people who want to be younger. And, and uh, you know, that's what you mean by rejuvenating, literally reversing aging, not just stopping it. Absolutely. Like, um, we may be able to live indefinitely at age 20 or 30 because we will stop the aging process and reverse it. Mm -hmm. And, uh, I mean, there are a lot of... Uh, very important implications of these kinds of ideas. And you've made it uh, your mission to explore them, push them forward, etc. What are the important things people should know about this kind of movement towards rejuvenation, becoming younger, transhuman? Do you, do you use the word transhumanism? Yes. Um, well, one thing that people should know, first of all, is that uh, immortality is possible. Actually, it already exists like cancer cells. Cancer cells are considered biologically immortal because they can live indefinitely forever. And this was discovered um, actually a long time ago, in 1951, with a patient who died at that time, but her cells are alive today. Mm -hmm. They actually became 100 years old because the patient, Henrietta Lacks, was born in 1920. Mm -hmm. And in 2020, those cells are 100 years old, but they look teenagers. Mm -hmm. So first of all, people need to know that immortality is not only possible, it already exists. We have cells that are immortal. We have small organisms like hydras, medusas, that are also biologically immortal and could live indefinitely. Um, so people need to know that this is scientific, this is real, this is happening very fast. Uh, another thing that I'd like to mention is that the Nobel Prize in Medicine in 2012 was to a Japanese scientist uh, called Shinya Yamanaka, who discovered that changing four genes, you can make an old cell young again. Only four genes. So we know that aging can be reversed. It can also be accelerated, but it can be reversed because aging is flexible. And aging today, many people are saying it's a disease, but a curable disease. Okay, okay. So uh, before we talk about the implications of having a planet full of people who aren't really passing away, uh, what are the principles that people can apply to their lives to prepare themselves for this uh, revolution, aside from making lots of money to be able to afford, afford it? Well, my friend uh, Ray Kurzweil, who is very famous for the idea of the singularity, he talks about three bridges to immortality. The first bridge is right now, the 2010s, beginning 2020s, which is do the things that your grandmother told you eat well, sleep well, don't drink too much, don't smoke, etc., etc. That's bridge one, diet, exercise, lifestyle. Then in the 2020s, we will reach the second bridge, which is biotech treatments. And then- In this decade. Beginning now, yes. Yeah. And then in the next decade, 2030s, we will have nanotech, nanotechnology treatments of a small nanobots that will actually modify, improve, fix our bodies. So these are the three bridges until we make it into the 2040s, when we will basically be able to live indefinitely young, okay. indefinitely young, which is the point I want to make, because I want to, to live indefinitely, but not indefinitely old. I want to be indefinitely young. young. And I repeat, this is possible, Nobel, a price in medicine 2012. Exactly. I mean, uh, the, the future is here. It's just unevenly distributed. 
And uh, in terms of the things that uh, your, your, our grandmothers told us, uh, I think that there's been a lot of exploration of that in the biohacking uh, community already. So we don't need to go, about, go, go into that so much, just eat well, exercise, sleep well, etc. cetera. Um, what about the current uh, decade? What, what are the gene therapies which are coming online now? Well, actually, um, we have been discovering what cancer did in order to be young forever. And that is basically growing their telomeres continuously. So cancer cells do not age because their telomeres grow indefinitely so they can reproduce continuously. That, therefore, a first treatment is telomerase injections. Mm -hmm. And there are some patients that are doing this experimentally now. So that began telomerase treatment. Did, did you do it? No, no, because these technologies are also totally experimental and okay. very expensive and yeah. they can be done in, in very few places yeah. officially. Uh, another treatment, but that's coming online soon. Tell, tell them, what is it? Telomerase in, uh, injection? Injections, yeah. yeah. T telomerase is the enzyme that makes the telomeres grow mm -hmm. and the telomeres are the final caps of the chromosomes. Correct. So anyway, that is beginning and we know it works. Telomere therapy. Yes, it, okay. it works with animals. Yeah. Scientists did this first with animals and when we know it works more or less, we begin to do it with humans. Coming soon to a clinic near you. Yes, another thing which is incredible is epigenetic treatments, gene therapy to, to express certain genes. Mm -hmm. And this is what the Japanese scientist Shinya Yamanaka discovered, mm -hmm. that aging can be controlled by maybe four only genes. four genes. Okay. And this is magical. This is 2012 uh, Nobel Prize. Yes, in medicine. And this is right now being used for macular degeneration because uh, you can uh, relatively easy change the some genes in the eyes, not in the whole body. It is easier to begin with an organ. So this has been done at the cell, single cell level, and at the organ level, it is beginning. It might take maybe five, ten more years until we can do it in other organs, bigger organs than the eye. The eye is relatively small. And then it will take a few more years to do it at the organism level, at the whole body level. But again, we know it is possible uh, because it already happens mm -hmm. at the cell level. Okay, so uh, that's the second uh uh, therapy coming online. Any others that uh, yes. are interesting? Th there are many other treatments. Yeah. One is called senolytics. Senolytics is to eliminate the zombie cells in the body. We have cells that are dying, but don't quite die completely, but they are bad for the body. So you need to eliminate them. And there are many companies that are beginning now working on senolytics, which is eliminating old cells in the body. So this is another biotech treatment. And there are other things which will be happening during this decade of the 2020s, second bridge. And then the third bridge in the 2030s, which is nanotech, mm -hmm. little nanorobots in our blood that will be cleaning uh, the veins, the arteries, eliminate all the cholesterol mm -hmm. or any problems in any organs. Mm -hmm. But this is still experimental, not even in animals yet, mm -hmm. nanotech, not mm -hmm. even in animals, but between five and 10 years, we will begin experimenting with animals. Another thing talking about animals is that there are many experiments for dog rejuvenation because people love their mm -hmm. pets. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the most famous scientists at Harvard University uh, called George Church, he's doing experiments to rejuvenate dogs. And he believes that in only two years, we will have commercial treatments to rejuvenate dogs. Nice. When, Tito, that's going up to you. Yes, when people <laughs> understand that, that this is possible, because dogs and pets in general, also cats, horses, whatever, yeah. they are like part of the family. Yep. And once people understand that this is happening to their dogs, they see their dog just doesn't live uh, 12 or 15 years, but 20, 25 years, they will say, well, if it is Good for the dog, maybe also is good for me. And it's one case where animal testing might be uh, ethically appropriate. <laughs> yes, yes, because the dog will be happy to. Yeah, he, he, be will alive. Be, he will be a younger dog. Exactly. So um, uh, it was nice to focus on the, the, the current bridge, the nanotech bridge. We can worry about that when it comes. It's nice to be aware of it. I think that the, uh, you know, 
the forthcoming treatments are the most exciting ones because they're, they're emerging right now. If people want to learn about this, your book is a good place to start. Yeah, I published a book in my native tongue, Spanish, and then in my second tongue, Portuguese. My book has become a bestseller in those two languages, and now it will be published in French, in Russian, and Chinese. My book is called The Death of Death. The Death of Death. And actually, Catchy. Yes, and that is what I'm talking about here at the Biohacker Summit. Um, next year, Obviously, it's in English as well. Uh, no, no, actually, no. Uh, it will be yeah. next year, but uh, so La muerte far, del muerta. Exactly. La muerte de la muerte. De la muerte. And in Portuguese, a morche da morche. Okay. And then in French, it, it's coming out in a couple of months. La mort de la mort. Oh, wow. That sounds very romantic, yeah, by so, the way. So it is in my book. <laughs> and then also there are other conferences. I organized one in um, Madrid, in Spain, where I live, which is called Transvision. Transvision Conference. Mm -hmm. And another one in Las Vegas, in uh, the USA, which is called Revolution Against Aging and Death. Because this is truly a revolution. That's, your, that's your event? Yeah, that's the one I co-organized in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. And the one I co-organized in Madrid is called Transvision. Transvision. Yeah. Very so nice. everybody is welcome to come yeah. and enjoy and see these treatments because like here we have exhibitors yeah. that uh, show what they are doing. Exactly, exactly. And uh, you know, for me, uh, it's a very simple question. Do you believe that life is better than death? If you believe life is better than death, then you shouldn't die. Well, uh, as I said, I don't plan to die. Mm -hmm. And not only that, I plan to be younger in the future. Exactly. So if you feel younger, you are healthy, uh, you are in good physical and mental uh, shape, mm -hmm. then you will want to be alive. Exactly. Uh, but to me, uh, of course, there is no discussion. Being alive is always better than being dead. Correct. We think, we think. Okay, so thank you very much for sharing. If you wanted to leave one message to the audience the most valuable, the most powerful idea, what would that be? These are incredible times. We are between the last mortal generation and the first immortal generation. And I ask people, where do you want to be? Do you want to be one of the last people who die or the first people who might be immortal? Beautiful. Thank you. Thank you, Alex.